Welcome to back to welcome back to my channel. This is Do Life with B. I am B. If you are an old subscriber, how are you doing? I am doing my review for Marguerite de Villa C. And if you are new here, you are more than welcome to subscribe and join us. I do lifestyle, I do travel, and I do some beauty sprinkled in here and there. Um, but we just chill over here. We have a good time. We're real life people. We don't just put on for social media. I don't have no lashes on. I took my nails off to get a break. Like We're family, okay? So, without prolonging even more, we are going to discuss my review for the Margaritaville of the Seas Paradise two-day sailing leaving from Port of Palm Beach going to they call it Grand Bahama but if you've been to a major cruise ship then it's just um, the free port port but not on the same side it's literally I don't know how to describe it there's really nothing for you to do more about that in my other vlogs. Y'all go catch up on that. Um, so for this particular sailing, I was in cabin 5047, which was an ocean view cabin. And they offer interior ocean view. And I know it had an option for suites, but I didn't recall, I'm not suites, balconies, but I didn't recall seeing any balconies on the ship. So that's neat to hear not there. But, um, uh, I'm going to get into a few of the back details, the initial um, like booking type of things. So when you book, there are some things they tell you and there are some things they don't tell you. You can get to the port as early as 1030 in the morning. I do not suggest you do that because when the ship has clearance at one o'clock, that's when they start letting passengers on board. So if you're there at 1030, you're going to be sitting waiting and there's not much space for you to sit. <laughs> um, so I would take that into consideration. I didn't leave until one o'clock um, from my hotel and caught an Uber and I got there about 1 20, 1 30. And the valet line, another tip, the valet line was crazy uh they don't have a self-parking for valet it's 22 dollars per night and it's not a big space for cars to be parked they have to do overflow and i want to say it's maybe two or three valet guys running for all of these cars now mind you you can't leave your car unattended you have to wait till you get to the front get your valet give them your keys Give them, take your luggage to the porter, or you can like do that, but you cannot leave and get on the ship without getting your valet information. So if you are somewhere where you can live closer, or if you're somewhere that can, you know, you can drive to port, I would suggest maybe finding somewhere, a hotel or somewhere where you can do it and park there for free or for maybe the same amount, but the headache. Um, and then there's also a long line of people having to wait at the end to get their vehicles as well because they're running all over like i said it's not that many of them um uh what else gratuities for regular cabins are 14 dollars 95 per person per night um if you have a suite it's 19 dollars 95 per person per night and when i booked it i do not recall seeing an option to prepay those gratuities I'm quite sure you can once you're on board or you can just let it come from your account, but um, keep that in mind. Uh, there's also another, <laughs> there's also another 18% gratuity added for like specialty dining, for the bar, for the spa. Um, and I, I believe that's it, but take that in consideration also. I, um, got a bottle of water from the bar and I want to pay, I paid like $8. I paid $8 for a bottle of water, but I wasn't prepared in thinking that 
you have you can first of all bring water because I didn't see that that was an option and I didn't want to have to throw my water away and I didn't see an option where you can have it like waiting in your stateroom for you so take those into consideration as well also when I am referring to this Margarita Villa of the Sea I do not look at it as a cruise ship I do not look at it as um one of the larger lines that carnival royal caribbean norwegian things like that i look at it as a ferry because it is such a short sailing and there's people that use it as a way to get back and forth to grand bahama in florida when you get to grand bahama the very next day you will see a large amount of people getting off with their luggage and you will see a large amount of people getting on Keep in mind, when you get off of the ship, if you go to do an excursion, if you go to do anything, you have to go through um, the port. And then when you come back on the ship, you have to go back through customs. Not saying you have to take your passport or anything like that, but you do, there is, like, you have to still go through customs. So just, you know, pack your patience um, with that. Um, I do um, also... Want to talk about the price? So for two people, it's five hundred and thirty-two dollars and eighty cents. Uh, for two people, they're always running a special. They're either doing buy one get one free, buy one second passenger half off, buy one three sale free. There's always some type of some deal going on, um, which makes it more enticing to use as a ferry, and it makes it more enticing. Um, for a quick getaway if that's what you want to use it for um, because if you look at other um, ferries you will see the price and difference and I'll get into that a little bit later but the here and the now um, so a secret fee that they don't tell you about and you will just be like what is this that I'm seeing on my account is they have a fuel surcharge so the fuel surcharge is $12 per person per day so um it's only two days so <laughs> the last night um well while you're in grand bahama because that's the last night uh you like you can access your account information from your tv and you're like what the hell is this charge like what is that that's a fuel charge so take that into consideration don't be alarmed and there's no way to prepay for that either so don't don't go up to guest services making a fuss okay because I, I warned you I told you what it is now the first impressions of this ferry is look at it as exactly what it is it's a two-day sailing there aren't going to be any slides there aren't going to be any um there aren't going to be there aren't going to be any slides there aren't going to be any water parks there aren't going to be crew coming around asking you if you want the drink package if you want to buy beers if you want to do that they're not going to do that you get on board and how you get on board is the main area so if you have any business to handle with your account or anything like that you have to pass guest services to get in um it's very chill it's very lax she's an older ship um and you're getting what you pay for there's it's not gonna be a whole lot please be realistic with your expectations on this ferry okay if you look at it at ferry as a ferry though the amount of amenities in the things that you get is pretty good. Uh, if you look at it as a cruise ship and a cruise line, then you're going to be disappointed, especially if you've been on larger cruise lines. Keep that in mind. Keep it in mind. Okay. Um, the first impression also was my cabin was clean. It smelled clean. It was spacious. The only problem that I had was the smell of sewage. I didn't flush my toilet and I smelled it. 
um, their water filtration, I'm quite sure, hasn't been upgraded or I don't know what the correct word would be used, but it's still, it's a smell and it's enough to make you gag. Um, so keep that in mind. <laughs> it was, there was no issues about cleanliness. There was none. Um, and I thought when they went to dry dock that they would address like some of the issues that a lot of other YouTubers were complaining about. When I asked my room attendant, he said, oh, we just painted the bathroom. <laughs> he said, we just painted the bathroom. I said, oh, cool. Got it. Heard. That's fine. Um, the buffet is small. So if you prefer to eat in the buffet instead of going to the dining room, they will have a variety of food, but it's not going to be many. They might have like five choices of things and maybe a salad bar, um, but not too much. On the good side, though, the food in the dining room has a new menu each night for the two-day sailing. And the food was better on this ferry than some of the Royal Caribbean and Carnival lines that I've been on. And say what you want. I've been over on over 14 cruises and it was good. It was good. I am pleasantly surprised that the burger bar has a vegan option and it's not sitting waiting. Like, you know how they have like the burgers kind of ready. The vegan burgers, they make it fresh. It took about three minutes, which all you have to do is go get a plate and get whatever toppings or whatever you want. They make your um burger behind you is the toppings bar and then you can get fries as well um so yeah i'm still thinking about that indian dish and i've never had indian food from an indian restaurant and it's still good like i'm still like what is this called can i take this picture of what i had of what I had and take it to a restaurant and ask them what is this and do you have it um there aren't many crew um there are some things you'll notice like maybe trash being left around trash being left longer than you would normally seeing bit left like maybe hours um and then what the what the patrons would do would we would just kind of like stack plates on top of each other and like move it to an empty bar um just so we have somewhere to sit so pack your patience pack some gloves and we're just gonna eat and just clear your mind whatever you're there for on that particular sailing um there's worn areas like some of the chairs some of the tables wobble um the ping pong table was like deserted and didn't have um the paddles or the balls or anywhere where you can even get it so it was just the table that was sitting there um and um there was a lot of food options aside from dining room in the buffet now you do have to pay for them the pizza you have to pay for, the ice cream you have to pay for, coffee you have to pay for. Um, they're not expensive, but their their prices are based off of more than one person. So I didn't taste it, but they had a pretty good option. And I've seen a lot of people get it and it smelled really good. Um, they had plenty of stores, plenty of um, places where you can kind of chill out if you wanted to and you didn't want to be in your cabin um and they also had entertainment i didn't go to any of the shows but they had entertainment um which is good for a ferry even though it's a two-day sailing they have an itinerary of things that you can do if you do get bored so um take that take that um into consideration once again, like I say, and I'm going to keep repeating it, do not compare it to a cruise line because it is not a cruise. I look at it as a ferry. I, However you choose to use it as a ferry, if you used to use it as a cheaper option than a hotel, 
if you use it as a cheaper option than a resort or if you're doing a back-to-back -back or you're you have some time before or after a trip and you're like oh, I got a few days jump on that to see what that's about you know what I'm saying um the other the other ferry so I did some price comparisons and the um the Bellaria Ferry. The Bellaria Ferry goes from Fort Lauderdale to Grand Bahama. They pulled in right next to us. And if you compare the prices side by side, right? So the Bellaria operates two days a week. Um, they operate three days a week in the warmer months. So like May to September. Um, and then the pricing can range anywhere from 150 to 170 one way, but you're there in three hours. Now, with that being said, it's going to be a little bit more rough <laughs> because they're getting you there fast. And um, some of the ferries, you can take your car. I don't know about that part, but I did my research when I looked it up. Um, they also have a drink package and those range from 20 to 40 dollars so if you are comparing the two ferry the Bellaria ferry um which is a ferry throughout the caribbean and you're comparing margaritaville of the sea it's more of how you want to get there do you want to just hurry up and get there safely and just in a rush or do you kind of want to take your time you can sleep, you can shower, you can get food. Um, and let that be the determining factor because <sighs> ranging the price, it's going to be a little cheaper. But sometimes of the day and sometimes of the month, it can be just as much as what Margarita Bill of the Sea was. Um, I am not trying to discourage you from doing either of the two. Let me say that. I'm not trying to discourage you from Margarita Villa. See, I just want you to look at things in a different way when comparing what they call the cheapest cruise ship. I know that they are um, expanding and they're going to do like four and five day sailings to like Mexico and things like that um, in June. But this particular two day sailing you get what you pay for. And I think basing it off of that, I think it's a pretty good thing. Um, yeah, yeah. I think, I, I think if, I think if I was going to Grand Bahama and I didn't want to have to worry about a flight or I didn't want to have to worry about, um, the hustle and bustle of coordinating or for a cruise, you know what I'm saying? The amount of money um, for the people that you can bring on board, like say you get you and four people or you and three other people, I'm sorry. If they have a promotion going on, you're paying for one person, three people are sailing for free. Three people are eating, three people are sleeping, three people are getting over there comfortably. Um, so that wraps up my um, my Margaritaville of the Sea review. I want to know what y'all think. Like based on, if you've been there, if you've been on there, based on watching other YouTubers reviews and their experiences and things like that. Um, for them being the worst cruise line. <laughs> um, what do you think about it? Because I would go back. I would go back if I had two, three days free and I'm just like, you know what? I just want to be on some water and I want to clear my thoughts. I would go back and do it again. So thank you all for watching. Like I said, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. And um, I will see you in the next vlog. You have a good day. Be safe.